Forey, I thought you'd gone home. I was just leaving, Mr. Colvin. I had some work to finish up. Oh, I see. Well, guess I'll be going. Good night, sir. Good night. You want to hear? Huh? Speak. Huh? Huh? Speak. Ha 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 Rindy, huh? Have you been a good dog since I saw you last, huh? Huh? Well, I'm sure glad to know that. Oh, oh, Zorjan, uh, those dogs, he like you most so much as me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I like him, too. <laughs> oh, say, John, I have a letter for you. Yeah? I happen to be coming up this way, and I thought I'd bring it up to you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you can read it better this way. You had it upside down. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, 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 no, Sergeant, I no can read. Uh, uh, maybe, please, you told me what Caril she say to her uncle, huh? Oh, oh, glad to, Jean. That's why I came up here. I want to learn what my sweetheart's doing down in the States. Oh. Dear Uncle Jean, Please keep these papers for me in a safe place. They are very valuable. I will tell you all about it when I see you in a couple of weeks. Love, Carol. Well, that seems to be all, Jean. Oh, that's funny thing. I am expect more of that. Huh? That is the way we take our always in the hurry, huh? <laughs> well, uh, uh, I must keep this until she come, huh? Oh, huh. 
Oke. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so, fella, you knew that was from Carol, didn't you? <laughs> um, uh, Carol, she comes here. See, here, she says so, here. Huh? <laughs> I guess you'll be as glad to see her as I, huh, Reddy? <laughs> well, so long, John. <laughs> Gotta be getting back to the post. Ah. Au revoir, monsieur. Au revoir. Ah, ah. A good look, huh? Oh, merci. Au revoir. <laughs> Uh, uh, Riti, she want me to keep good care of this, huh? She say it is valuable. Mm. Well, um, uh, this is safe place for the money. Huh? Uh, this is safe place for the pepper too, huh? Ah, <laughs> oh, that was a fine catch we made. Now we must clean these things here. Putting him out for a moment, I'd like to talk to you. Come, Tinti, Ariti, come. Outside, you, come here, come. Out. Wait, outside. Huh? Now, monsieur, sit down. What can I do for you, huh? Your name is uh, John Foray? Oui, uh, that is my name. Then you must have a niece name of Carol for it. Oh, can you? Yeah, yeah, I have. Well, I want that letter that she sent you a week ago. Letter? I have no letter, she said. Give me those bonds if you know what's good for you. I... I know nothing about bonds, monsieur. Well, that proves that you do. Now tell me where they're hidden or...
will you tell me where those bonds are? Will you tell me? You're uh, back from your patrol early, Sergeant. Yes, nothing out of the ordinary to detain me. Anything new here? No, nothing. That's fine. Sergeant! What is it, Constable? Come here a minute. Look, it's Renty, and he hurt. Yes. What's the matter, Renty, old boy? He's wounded. Somebody winged him. Come well, on, let's take him in. Come on, Run quick and get some water, will you? In the bandage? Yes, old boy, that's a fellow. 
I wonder who could have shot him. That's what I'm going to find out. Say, here, Brian, you, you put a bandage on him, will you? He'll help you, old boy. He'll fix you up. He won't hurt you, Brian. I'm going up to Jean Perret's cabin. That's a boy, Wait a minute, Freddy. That's a good boy. Wait a minute. Oh, Brad. I came as soon as I got your telegram. Isn't it awful that my Uncle Jean was... Ah, uh, don't cry, sweetheart. It's too bad, but those things are liable to happen, you know. Do you know who did it? No, not yet. But I'll find out who it was. Die in the attempt. And Rindy, how is he? Oh, doing nicely. You want to see him? All right, let's go. Hello, Constable O'Brien. How do you do, Miss Bray? <laughs> oh, what a beast it must have been to shoot you, too. with me when I go, but I want to go to the cabin first. All right, Carol. from headquarters, Sergeant. Thank you, Gary. Just got a dispatch from headquarters, Jim. Yeah? Now, this is impossible. Read that, Jim. This is a warrant for the arrest of Carol Foray for embezzlement. She's not an embezzler. This can't be true. Why, she wouldn't steal from anyone. I'm going to see Carol about this. What was that dispatch about? That was a warrant calling for the arrest of the girl that he's engaged to marry. It was? Yes.
Brad, what's the matter? Someone will pay for this. But it's true, Brad. I did take those securities from the company. You mean you robbed the company you were working for? Yes, but I did it to save them. I discovered that Mr. Colvin was about to run away to Europe with those securities. Then you sent the bonds to your uncle until you could notify the stockholders, is that it? Yes, Brad. I can show you the letter I wrote them explaining to what I had done. Then it's all right. We'll return the securities to the but stockholders. But we can't return them, Brad. They're gone. That thief must have taken them when he killed my uncle. Well, I guess I'm your prisoner, Brad. I... Not mine. I... I'll send O'Brien up for you. Oh, thanks, Brad. Things are in a pretty bad mess, really. Mm -hmm. You could sure help us a lot, old boy, if you could talk. Where's the prisoner, Sergeant? We've come to take her to headquarters. Constable O'Brien has gone to her cabin to bring her in, sir. She wasn't there, but I found this note pinned on the door. It's, it's for you, Sergeant. Well, Sergeant, what does it say? Forgive me, Brad, but I cannot stand the disgrace of arrest. I'm innocent. I have gone away until I can get the evidence to prove it. Carol. Personal affairs should not influence you in your duty as an officer of the Royal Canadian Mounted, Sergeant Sheridan. This prisoner should have been placed under lock and key. I... I know, sir. I'm sorry. Sorrow does not uphold the tradition of the service. Until such time as you can vindicate yourself, you are reduced to the ranks.
Or would you prefer to resign? Until the murderer of Jean Fillet has been brought to justice, I do not care to resign, sir. Very well. Constable O'Brien, you will act as officer in command of this post until further orders. Very well, sir. Oh, sit down. On the strength of your report last night, I wired Mr. Colvin that we had taken the girl into custody. I'm sorry, sir. Now I must advise him that the Royal Canadian Mounted has failed. Attend to the matter at once. Here is Mr. Colvin's letter. It will give you his address. What? 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 What's that piece doing in here? Stop it, stop it, boy. Stop it. That's it. He belongs to Carol Foray, sir. He was wounded by the man who shot her uncle. And to once and destroy him. But, sir, he meant no harm. It was an accident. He deliberately snapped at my hand. The dog is dangerous, I tell you. I believe it was the letter he meant to snap at, sir. Let there be no more nonsense about this. Take that dog out and destroy him at once. That is an order, Sheridan. Yes, sir. Constable, the dog is dangerously wounded. Death is more merciful than suffering. Perhaps you're right, sir, but let's say no more about it. Now, here are your orders. You were to follow that foray girl and track her down at all costs. You heard what the captain said, didn't you, old fellow? I'd as soon kill a human being as I would you, Rindy. We're both in disgrace. That child will make him think I'll put an end to you. Now I'll take you over to Indian Joe's. He'll take care of you. Come on, old boy. Come on now. Let's get it. That's a good boy. That's a fella. That's a good boy. Now, how you feel, huh? I'll show you the files first, Captain Edwards. They will prove that Mr. Colvin is a cheat. Then everyone will be convinced of my innocence. I think I got the number. I counted the clicks. Three, one, four, one, six, three. Do you recognize it? Why, yes, that's the number of the garage where he keeps his car. Do you suppose he knows we are on his trail and is trying to get away? If he did, we'd bring him back. These days, no criminal escapes the law. Can't you arrest him now before he has a chance to escape? 
No, not without evidence. Come on, let's have another look at those files. What have you got there? Well, I'm just taking a little snack along. I might get hungry on patrol. <laughs> you better take this along, too. You seem to be quite fond of snacks on patrol lately. By the way, how is Ritty coming out? Do you think he'll pull through? So you know, huh? Ah, sure. You couldn't fool me for a minute. But, uh, of course, officially, I know nothing. Thanks, Jim. I just couldn't shoot him. Besides, I think Rinty may hold the key to the solution of Jean Ferret's murder. Somehow, Brad, I think the same thing. You know, there's something strange about the way he snapped at that letter. You mean it, Jim, that in some way this letter is connected with the murder? No, I wouldn't say that, Brad. Because how could a man way down in the States have anything to do with it? But still, why does the dog hate the man smell on this letter? Venus Colvin. That's the man Carl said was robbing his company. He would certainly be interested in those securities that were stolen from Frey's cabin. What do you intend to do, Brad? I have an idea. I'm going to test it on Renty. This letter went through many hands before it reached the inspector. Any one of them could have been the man. Well, I'll tell you all about it when I come back, Jim. How's the old fellow making it? Dog him pretty good. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> well, you'll be as good as a new in a few days, old fellow. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Somewhere in the world is the man that killed his master. Mm. I don't think Rennie will ever forget that man since, Joel. That dog him pretty smart. Yes, he is. This is a letter from Trapper Jules down the river. <laughs> well, that doesn't seem to mean much to him. This is one from Colton, the one he snapped at the other day. Why he snapped at that? That's just what I'm going to find out, Joe. This letter was written by the man Miss Carl worked for. Thanks, old fellow. We'll check up on him. Hey, old boy. Here you go. In connection with the murder of John Foray, we would appreciate a report on the whereabouts of Enos Calvin on April the 15th as per data hereto attached. That's good. There you are. It may be a wild goose chase, Brad, but it's a clue. Yes. And we owe it to the dog to run it down. I'll get this in the mail right away. Oh, it's 
it's you, Captain Edwards. Yes. Won't you sit down? Thank you. But I'm afraid I've got bad news for you. What is it, Captain? Did Mr. Colvin escape? No, not that I know of. But your case is called for trial next week. Oh, can't we postpone it? I'm not ready for it yet. I'm afraid not. Court orders are court orders. Then it will be the end of everything. I'll never clear myself. Oh, if we could only have some more time. I'm presenting my evidence to the district attorney tomorrow morning. Within 48 hours, Enos Colvin will be in jail. Do you think that will prove my innocence? Undoubtedly. My evidence is positive. Oh, I hope so. John's cabin to see if we can pick up any new clues. <laughs> Thanks for taking care of me, Joe. I'll make it right with you. All right. Come on, Rennie. Come on, let's go, boy. Come on, come on. Hurry up. Come on, here. Rennie! Rennie! just on my way to the post to see you. You've asked for information regarding an Enos Calvin in the 4A case. How could he be implicated in a murder away up here in the North Woods? He was interested in those securities Jean Foray had, sir. Quite true. But they were stolen from him. He wouldn't have to murder a man to get them back. I know, sir. But I'd like to run down every possible clue. Very well. We want to see justice done. I'm afraid this Calvin matter will get us nowhere. Report to be at the post before you go back on patrol. Very good, sir.
It's okay, Randy. They've gone. <laughs> Smart dog. Come here, you. Come out of me. Come over here. Until the captain realizes the mistake he's made, you'll have to stay undercover. <laughs> Jean is gone, Randy. If we can find the man who did it, see if that sharp nose of yours can find a clue. One. What? What's that? What do you got there? So, the murderer lost this button off his coat, huh? Randy, old fellow, this is a most important clue. See if you can find something else. Go on. What have you found now? <laughs> Jean's money. The securities. Now Carol will be absolutely cleared. You were right, Rindy. Colvin did handle these papers. You could detect the scent. Come on, boy. You've done a good day's work. Ready? We'll follow that trail after and make my report. Gone. Do you suppose he suspected something when I phoned? Not unless someone tipped him off. He only got the warrant a half hour ago. Stolen securities recovered. Stop. I'm holding for your instructions. Inspector Bradshaw. Oh, he's gone up there to get those securities. I know he has. Let's find out for sure. Call the garage and see if his car is there. garage. Is Mr. Colvin's car there? No, he left early this morning. Yes? He said he was leaving town for a few days. Okay, thanks. He's left home. A wire inspector Bradshaw. No. Sometimes it's days before telegrams are delivered. We'll drive up and touch him before the damage is done. Smart as you are, old boy, you can't follow these tire tracks. Back to the post we go, Vinny. This is where we turn off for the post, and there's only one way to get in there with a car. There are fresh car tracks. They may have been Colvin. Can you tell me where I can find Inspector Brad? Find him in the post. Thank you. Come in.
I'm looking for Inspector Bradshaw. I'm Enos Coleman. I'm Inspector Bradshaw. Would you be seated? Thank you. You wired me that you'd found the stolen securities. Well, yes, we, uh, just a moment. It's very peculiar how we found these. They were hidden in a secret place in John Foray's cabin. Never mind the details. I'm glad you found them. Now, of course, I'll dismiss my charges against the girl. Don't you want to look them over? Make sure that they're all there? No, no, I trust the Mounties. I'm sure they're all here. I'll have to check them back at my office anyhow. Quite an interesting wake up here, Inspector. This being one of the Mounties, I mean. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll have to be moving along. Thanks a lot. Oh, one minute. I'm sorry, but I must make out a report and you will have to sign a receipt. Oh, very well. You'd better hide out, Rennie. I'll signal you if the coast is clear. Gary. Whose car is that? Some man asked for Inspector Bradshaw. Where is he? He's in the post. Sorry to have to delay you, Mr. Calvin, but regulations, you know. Sign there, please. Is that all? Yes. Oh, Constable. Yes, sir. Witness this instrument. Thanks again, gentlemen. I'm sorry to have to hurry off. That's all right. Happy to have served you. Sure. Uh, Inspector Bradshaw. Yes? You kindly tell me the meaning of this? Well, I don't know. I'll see to it. What are you doing, Constable Sheridan? Putting a rope around the neck of the murderer of Jean Frey, sir. Uh, you see, sir, I found where the killer's car had been hidden, and... Why, Carol! Oh, Brad! Where's Mr. Colvin? Well, he's right here. We have enough evidence against him to convict him. Stop that man, Constable!
We must have lost his trail. We'll go back and try to find it. Take this man to the post. I'm sorry, sir. I couldn't shoot him. I'm sorry, old fellow, but I've heard all about it. We all make mistakes. Can you ever forgive me? Thank you. You're a real gentleman. Where are your chevrons? Here they are. And you may tell the sergeant he's a credit to the service. Thank you, sir. Now, ready? Gentlemen don't spy on affairs that do not concern them. 